Hello everyone, this is Jake, and it's been a few days since we've done a tutorial, so let's get started on day 19 of learning to program in Ruby. If you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel, I really appreciate it. Okay, so today we're going to be going over the dot sort and the spaceship or combined comparison operator. And so let's first go over the dot sort, and we're going to create an array and then we're going to sort that array in alphabetical order. So we're going to make our array name books and let's go ahead and you can actually write whatever you want whatever books that you want and I'm just going to put some of my own. Let's do Demon Haunted World. If you can't think of any books just go ahead and write what I'm writing. Demon Haunted World. Uh, that's by Carl Sagan. We're not going to worry about the authors. Um, a short history of nearly everything. And that's a Bill Bryson novel. Basic economics. I think that's a Stephen Levitt. Stephen Levitt. Stephen Levitt, and then another author. It's escaping me right now. Basic economics. And one more, let's do four. Oh, let's see, The Rational Optimist. And that's Matt Riddle, Matt, uh, Matt, Matt Ridley, that's what it is. Okay, and in case you're interested in looking at what those books are. Okay, so then below that, we want to sort these books in alphabetical order. So we're going to do books dot sort. And we're going to sort that in place. So we put the exclamation there. We're going to sort it, sort it in place. And then we're going to put books out. Hit save. I'm going to name this CCO to and .rb. And let's bring that in. Hit enter. And it has sorted it in alphabetical order. Even though we started with Demon Haunted, a short history of nearly everything, and down, it actually has sorted it in alphabetical A, B, D, and T. So we have everything that we need in order to do that. So what if we wanted to sort these book titles in alphabetical order, but we wanted it to be descending, so it would start from Z. Ruby automatically sorts in ascending mode, so it always starts at A and goes up, or from zero and goes and counts up. But what if we wanted it to go the other way around? It We wanted it to compare each one of these items to the other items within there. What we would do to do that is we would use the combined comparison operator, and that's this right here. It's referred to as the spaceship, as lingo, it's easier to remember it that way because this actually, if you look at it, it looks like a Darth Vader's spaceship from A New Hope. And so that's why it's, it's just much easier to remember what people are referring to instead of combined comparison operator. And again, it takes longer to, it takes longer to say that. So let me explain what this does because typically a comparison operator is just a one is greater than. So if I were to write one is greater than three, it would result in false, right? Or if I were to write uh, two is greater than one, it would be true. So we have we have two different results that are possible. If we were to do one is equal equal to one, we would it, it would be true. If we were to do one is see, equal is equal to one, it would result or is equal to two, it would result in false. And if we were to do 2 is equal to 2, it would result in true. So that all makes, I mean, that all makes perfect sense. What the combined comparison operator does is it presents three possible answers. And that can be equal, equal, less than, greater. So those are the three different ones. 
And how it represents this is with the numbers negative 1, 0, and 1. Now the reason this is used for sorting is because negative 1 is less than 0, and 0 is less than 1, which means we can actually say whether or not something is going to be before or after. 0 means that it's equal to, so in sorting you can actually have things that are equal to, so if you have 20 and 20 it would need to be put as 0, and our value to the program would, re would be returned as 0. So explain this better. If I were to have the number 4, and then I were to have, um, let's say, a 3 here, then our result, our answer that's given back for the sort method, is going to result in 1. And it's going, to, it's going to keep that value as 1. Then if you come down here, if you were to do 3 is le, uh, spaceship, 4, it's going to result in negative 1. So now we have two separate items here, negative 1 and we have 1. So what we would do now, because we are ascending, is we would actually, the computer is still going to result as negative 1 comes before 1, right? So negative 1 comes before 1. And it's still true that 3 comes before 4. So even though these are represented differently, we're still sorting in the right order. Because if you were to have, for instance, if you were to have the number th uh, 5 included in this is greater than 4 equal to um, it's going to be equal to 1. So now you're saying there's two different things here though. You're going to be asking me, okay, well this isn't going to work now. How are we going to sort all of these items if now we have two items that are equal 1, but we know 5 is actually greater than 4. Well that's what's great about this is that what we do is we're going to be comparing now the 5 to the 4 and we will result in the 5 being a 1 but then when we compare the 4 to the 5 it ends up being a negative 1. So it will result in less and this is true with 6. So if we do 6 spaceship 5 the program will know that 6 is greater than 5, so that it will result in 1. But on this prior one, 5 resulted in 1. Well, all this tells us is that 5 comes after 4. It doesn't tell us anything else. It runs this, and then it cycles back through, and it compares 5 and 6. And it will tell us that 6 is greater than than 5. So 5 results in negative 1 while 6 results in 1. The comparison operator is, this, is the first number that it is concerned of. And you'll see what I mean when we actually write this out. So how we're going to write this in our program is we're going to come in here, we're going to do our curly braces, then we are going to put our pipes and we're going to take A and B. So what this does is it will compare each item. It's going to take item A and item B from our books.sort. So it's going to take Demon Haunted World, and it's going to take a short history of nearly everything. And then what we do is we want to compare these by doing the combined comparison operator. So we will write A, and we will write our spaceship symbol, and then B over here. And that is how we are telling it to sort. We are telling it to sort by, by comparing A to B. Now this is actually going to result in the exact same as having, um, of, just, of just having this printed out regularly without this. We could, we could have this, um, we'll just mute this out. We could have this, this will result here with this not on in the same as if this is on. You'll see what I mean. So we hit save, and then let's go into our command prompt and pull in CCO2 and hit enter. 
And you'll see that it's given us the exact same result, a short history of nearly everything, basic economics, demon hunted world, and the rational optimist. So you're going to be thinking, well, why, why are we doing this then? Why did we add all this extra step in? And the reason is, is because we can come in here and actually reverse this. We can write A and write B here. So what happens is, is it looks at item A and it looks at item B, but what happens is that it takes the one that is less than and it results in that being more. I hope that's I hope that's clear. And if it's not, just Google combined comparison operator and it'll definitely make sense to you. Because we've now reversed what it is going to um, feed out. This is what it normally does. It combine it compares A and B, A item and B item. But if we were to reverse those, what it now does is it compares A and B, but it results in our B having the higher having the higher importance even though it's less than. I know that this concept can be confusing if this is the first language that you're learning. A good analogy to this is trying to understand why blue and yellow mixed make green when all you need to do is mix your blue and your yellow and the result will be green. And you can actually use that tool, the knowledge of blue and yellow mixing together to paint in green. So if you don't understand this, the logic behind it right off the bat, just don't worry because you do not need to know absolutely everything about chemistry, the chemistry beyond behind mixing blue and green and why, or blue and yellow and why they make green. And that is not the only way that we can compare these things. So if we wanted to add a length to sort by length, what we could do is we could just do compare dot uh, length or books dot length after our sort, or we can do um, we can do this the other way around where it's reversed, and we would do b dot length because we need to compare each length with all the other lengths. We would do b dot length. I don't know why I am missing that g there or this t over here, and then we would hit save. And let's pull that in. I don't even know that I pulled in the. I don't know that we pulled in the last one. Enter. And it does a short history of nearly everything the rational optimist, demon hunter world, and basic economics. And what it's doing here is it's going by the length of the string. You can see the longer title is up top, and then second third and fourth. And we talked about this in the last episode on sorting, but this is another way of doing it. It is descending because it usually ascends. So if we were to make this A and this B, it would be the other way around. Hit save. And if we're already in the command prompt, you can just hit up and it'll go to the last one you pulled in. And it gives us a regular sorting. So I don't think that we actually I actually did pull the, the prior one in where we do it in reverse. So let's come back in here and make that B. Hit save. This will sort alphabetically from A to Z normally and now it is going to sort from Z to A. And you can see that it's T R O D H B A A. So that is how we were able to compare each item. Now again, if you were just doing two, we wouldn't need to do this, but because we have so many items, this is the way that we want to do it. So just a quick re-overview. Negative one will result if the first number is less than, it'll be negative one. Zero will result if the numbers are equal. So if we were to do six, and then we would to do oh, six, our result would be zero. And the reason we would want that to be zero is because on either side of these sixes, we're going to have results of one and negative one. And so we would need zero in order to know that there's nothing in between these two sixes. 
that these sixers can just go next to each other and they do not need to um the order of the sixes will not matter okay i think that that's it for today if you have any questions please leave them in the comments if you have any additional thoughts as well or any other advice please leave those in the comments and thank you adam nelson for all of your input and all of the comments and advice and help that you've been putting down there in the comments i really appreciate it and go ahead and read his comments as well because they are definitely helpful all right my name is jacob williams and I will talk to you later.